How you doing, Ebony? Hey, good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for taking your time to speak to me today. That's okay. Sorry, um, it's been a bit of a stuff around. And I mean, not just today, but in general, uh, I know we've been waiting for this interview for a while. Um, I have promised you, but we're here um, less That's than it. two weeks out of my fight. So, And I've been very selective of who I'm doing interviews with, so you should feel very special. <laughs> very special. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. <laughs> How's training? How's camp? Oh man, training and camp here is uh, it's unbelievable. Um, you know, I come here for a reason. I always come here for my fight camps. I'm obviously my big fight camps, and um, yeah, it's just all that fine training and and just coming off a fight. Like, I mean, everything's just worked out really good. So, yeah, really good. Amazing. What's it like um, training alongside so someone's uh, like a world champion like Callie Ray? Oh man, you have no idea. Like, um, training with Kaylee Rees is is it's like having her in my camp and having her to work with with so much experience. Like, she has like over twenty years of boxing experience. Obviously, two times world champion. Um, and we are very similar people in general. So, I mean, we both know we both work the same way. We both um learn the same way. And so, yeah, just having her that experience. I mean just shows you the difference because I don't have experience like that in, in, in Australia, like that pro experience. So, you know, you have girls that are good, you know, we're good, like, you know, but I mean, that experience is something that you, you can't teach because you can only get it through experience. So being able to learn off someone with so much experience um, is, is unreal. So, yeah. And the fact that she's Katie Taylor's sparring partner just shows. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, definitely. You know what I mean? Um, actually, Katie's um, around at the moment, like not here in Philly, but um, I heard she was back in um, New York. So we're going to actually try and get some sparring with, um, she was trying to try and get some sparring with Katie um, on the weekend because we just went to New York. But yeah, I mean, they spar a lot. They have some really good spars. And um, yeah, I look, I've been moving around with Kaylee and she's great to work with. Um, obviously, she's much bigger than me, but um she's she's so experienced and um she keeps me honest so it's good that's amazing obviously just if you don't mind me asking um obviously before this interview i had to wait for you you were eating someone that's um a world title challenger what's what's the diet what what would you eat well what's the what's the diet there um you know i'm pretty i eat really clean anyways um but yeah look i just pretty much eat like i eat five meals a day um usually load up all my carbs around training. I just had some carbs there, but yeah, like, I mean, oats and protein, uh, protein shake or eggs, um, chicken and rice. I have like chicken and rice like three times a day. Um, rice cakes and fruit before training. Um, you know, obviously vegetables and salad and then dinners, depending on what time I'm training, you know, I have more carbs with dinner um, or just um, protein and veg and fats, you know. So um, my diet's really, really, you know, like being a former bodybuilding, bodybuilder, my diet's pretty Smeek, so <laughs> it's the easy, easy part. <laughs> Amazing. Let's talk about your upcoming fight. Obviously, we know the story that you found out before your um, fight against Carol Earl that winning the fight, you was going to go and get your title shot. Um, yeah. Me and you spoke about <laughs> how about what's what's the story behind this um, this title shot? You were originally before Shannon Courtney, before Rachel Ball. You were yeah. originally the mandatory for this belt. How did this belt end up from being, you being the challenger in Australia or fighting yep. for it in USA? How did it end up in the UK with Eddie Hearn? So um, in May, um, May last year, 2020, um, I was um, asked, you know, I was sanctioned to fight for it um, against a girl here in Australia. I'm not going to say the name just because of how, what happened and to why the fight didn't happen is, is, uh, yeah, she went down. So pretty much I was from May, we were scheduled to fight um, with COVID and everything. It was just kept, you know, like trying to find the date for it. Um, and there was an um, another Australian that um, it was like between two Australians and me because I was the one that was um, ranked. Um, it was like they were pulling, playing tug of war on my arms for the belt. You know, they were happy to pay the sanctioning fee and all that kind of stuff for the belt. But um, I was like the pawn. And um Pretty much what happened was um, one of the teams, um, they forged, forged signatures on contracts and, um, yep, so, and the WBA got, got whiff of all that and um, it was a big, big mess. Um, and obviously they got stripped because of that, but I'm, I still was, um, 
obviously I was still ranked and so I still had the title shot if I wanted it. Um, we just needed someone to sanction the belt and stuff because um, they'll find someone to put the show on. So my Ebony, she's sanctioned. She's ready to fight for this world title. Would you mind hosting, hosting it? Do you want to host the fight? And then Eddie came back, yeah, with Rachel Ball. And I was like, fuck yeah, let's go, Rachel Ball. And that's pretty much how it happened. So um, we knew we had the belt. We had the sanctioning. We had all that, all that shit happened um, with that other team. And, you know, that's their problem. Like, that's what happens when you fucking be dodgy, you know what I mean? So um, they lost out and and I still wanted to have the fight. It was easy. All we needed was, you know, a promoter or someone to, to, to do the sanction and put the fight up and make it a fight. So it wasn't too hard. And... Um, and it actually just worked out obviously perfect at the time because I was building in the UK and, and everyone wanted me to fight, like, you know, the Shannon Courtney or the Rachel Ball. Like, we didn't really think Rachel Ball but um, at first. But, yeah, oh, there's my coach. My coach is online. Hey, sorry, I just had to say, hey, I know, I'll see you next week. <laughs> um, but, yeah, um, so that's pretty much how that happened. And I know everyone is, like, all, like, oh, um, you look like you're frozen. You good? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, you're frozen Hello. on my screen. Can you see me? Oh, well, frozen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're frozen for me. Damn it. Hopefully. Anyways, I don't know how long that was frozen for. But, um, yeah, anyways. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so I, I, I – and I wanted to fight in the UK, you know, because I want to fight with my friends because I have fans over there. So it was all working out. I was building over there. Um, so I decided that, you know what, instead of finding someone in Australia to fight or fly someone to Australia, I was like – maybe I can bring this belt to the UK. And I know I get a lot of bullshit, but, you know, like, oh, why is it me again? Well, you're fucking lucky that I'm even fighting for it, like that we even came to you guys, like that I'm actually bringing it to the UK because originally I could have just fought the two people in Australia. There's there's another girl in Australia that I could have fought, uh, fought, fought for it with that didn't do the dodgies. But I was like, no, like I want to take, I want to take this to the UK, um, you know, and um, why not? So, yeah, so, so. You're welcome, guys. You're getting a world title fight. <laughs> but I'm still taking the belt home. <laughs> what? The question I want to ask you is, um, no one, well, I like to look on Twitter and see what people, their opinions on when something is, is announced. So when they announced that Rachel Ball was going to get the title shot, it wasn't, no one, I never saw anyone question, oh, why is Ebony Bridges getting the title shot? People were like, why is Rachel Ball getting the title shot? Because people were shocked. She just beat Shannon Cordy and straight away getting the title shot. Do you believe in the women's division, when the title is vacant, just anyone can fight for it? Anyone can just yeah. get a title shot? Not anyone, but but it's it's much easier um, when yeah. it's vacant. You know, um, and like if you know boxing, like, well, some, some sanctions are a little bit different. But, um, like, it's not just anyone. Like, you know, you can't be fighting for a, um, a world title fight um, if you haven't won or you've just had, you know, one fight or you're dead. I mean, you, you can. That um, featherweight, the I think she's Chinese, she fought for, you know, IBF on her first <laughs> IBF world title on her first fight. So, I mean, yeah. women's boxing is very different. Like, it's very, very different. It's only really fresh. It's only, you know, like how it is at the moment, it's still quite – like you know premature you know and the pool's not deep so um and like i've stated you know i stated on on in a few quite a few interviews just look at all the british world champions current and look at some of the americans as well and i'm telling you right now they were fighting for their first world titles and their first seven on their seventh fight eighth fight ninth fight some fourth fight so it's just um it's just because it's, it's up I don't care. Good fight, and um, yeah, people can say what they want, but it's not it's not men's boxing; it's women's boxing. My wife. exactly. Can you hear me, Ebony? Um, you and yeah, yeah, you got me. Sorry, I just took okay? it off my no, I think the Wi-Fi is. Yeah, I feel like it's the Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi. So I just took it off Wi-Fi. So sorry about that. Um, but yeah, look, um, it's always this this world title fight. I, it was always meant to be mine. Like I mean, like I said, it was mine in in May last year. Um, and um, unfortunately, it fell through with Rachel. 
but look, it's come back and it's, it's, I'm getting the shot again. Like it's because it's meant to be, it's my destiny. Um, but I also do, um, you know, I, I want to fight Rachel. Like, you know, when I win, I'd, I'll fight Rachel. Like, uh, I think she deserves a shot. Like she's hundred percent, you know what I mean? So unfortunate, and, you know, she's my good mate. So I'm going to, you know, I, I want that fight, um, for her. Cause I know she, she did the same for me. The thing is, is like, we can say in what, as much as we want, you know, it just shows like I could have, she was she was petitioning for me to fight for it and wait for me to have the fight, but they kind of made her f- do the Shannon Courtney fight. You know what I mean? When all they had to do really is wait another month for my shoulder to be better and we could have had the fight, but they didn't want to do that. So, I mean, we can fight for it and hopefully she does get it and, and we can have the fight because I know everyone was really excited about that fight, including us. And so I think it would be a good fight to have, you know, we're on to that. And then, Just just at the end there. Can you hear me? Yeah. Well, I was going to say, um, before I move on to Shannon Courtney, uh, how's, how, you mentioned your shoulder. How does the shoulder feel at the moment? Obviously, now you're back in training, full camp. Obviously, I know you, you obviously just had a fight, but does it feel good? Or yeah, everything it feels good. Like- yeah, man, like everything's good. I mean, I was having some serious um elbow issues before my last fight like that's why you see in a lot of my photos and a lot of my videos my arm my elbow is tight t- taped so i wasn't really um my shoulder my shoulder's good um but yeah everything's good i'm telling you right now like everything feels feels really good now um it's uh, i haven't you know n- no problems um just just e- eager to get that fight and happen and um get my belt amazing let's talk about your opponent what i want to know is apart from a very different way in that she's never going to experience ever in her life again. Um, what can you bring to Shannon Courtney differently to what Rachel Ball brought to her? Well, I'm shorter than her. I've got more power. Um, a lot more power. Um, I'm a lot more explosive. I'm a completely different fighter to, to, Shannon, to, to Rachel Ball. Completely different. I'm a completely different fighter to everyone that she's fought. You know. And she's a different fighter to what I fought. You know, so... Um, you know, and I just feel like you can't really prepare for me. Um, you can try, but I just feel like you can't. So, um, yeah, the, the unknown, <laughs> you know, there's not much out there on me. Um, and it's not like people in the UK talking about Ebony at training and how she spars because no one fucking knows, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's she doesn't know shit. She doesn't know shit. So, um, she's, you know, she's going to get a good shock. Let me ask you a question in your opinion. Obviously, because you're coming to UK territory, obviously, Shannon Courtney is yeah. the UK, the face of Matchroom. Obviously, recently, well, not recently, let's just call it what it is. The last 10 years, 20 years, there's been some poor judging in boxing. Do you believe you have to stop her and not leave it to the judges? I don't think so, but um, I will. <laughs> That's the plan um, because I'm not there to play with my fucking food and um, I'll always go for the KO. I don't go for points. I'm not there to, uh, you know, to, I'm not tip, tip, pit padding, you know, trying to win rounds. I, I'll go in there and I want to fuck her right up, you know. So, um, you know, everything will be set for that. And if she survives, then she's going to have a face just like Carol L, <laughs> who survived eight rounds as me. And I'm telling you, go look at some photos of her and see that's what her face is going to look at. So, I mean... And, and, um, yeah, I think that would be enough. Like, uh, my power and, and the punches, like, I feel like they're, when I land on, on people, like, they're really decisive. They're really obvious because of the power. Um, so, um, I think that will help me in my favor, um, because I'll be more noticeable. Um, it's not like, you know, with, with Rachel Ball, where she just lets her hands go and, like, yeah, she's hitting, but is she really hitting? Like, you don't know because the heads don't move because there's not much pop behind the punches. Um, so I think that will help as well. And, yeah, I mean, I think, obviously, no matter what fight you're in, no matter what country you're in, a knockout is always going to seal the deal. If you don't knock someone out, no matter where you are, you always there's always a chance that it can be, can be rigged. And it's not just the UK. You know, the UK is known for it. 
But if you look at it recently, especially on matchroom cards, the underdogs and the guys from coming overseas are the ones that have been causing the upsets, a lot of the things. You know what I mean? And that's the thing is, like, people are saying, like, you know, a lot of matchroom fighters are losing, but I feel like Eddie putting, is putting on good fights, good even fights, um, and I don't think he really cares who wins, um, to, to be honest. I mean, of course, like, sometimes he has fighters that he wants to win, but at, at the end I don't think he really cares because he knows that as long as it's a good fight, um, he's going to win because people want to see good fights. And as it comes to me, Shannon and Rachel, like this little triangle, he's going to make money off win, lose or anything off all of us. You know what I mean? So I don't think, think he cares. Um, it's not like he's, you know, I don't, I don't think, I mean, I don't know about the judges, but yeah, like it's, you know, we'll see. Would you say Shannon Courtney is your t- is going to be your toughest opponent till now? Just what- Mate, Carol, <laughs> I mean, Carol was pretty fucking tough, but like, I mean, not tough as in like fully skilled, but she was tough. She was like a, a head like a granite. Um, I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I think so. Um, I'm I'm definitely going into that fight thinking it's the it's the going to be the toughest fight of my life. You know, it's a world championship fight. Um, it's not just the fact that it's against Shannon. You know, it's the whole thing of it it's a world title fight it's in match room it's in a bubble it's, it's it's like there's so many factors that make this fight um different you know what i mean and um i think she could definitely be the hardest one of my hardest fights so she could also be one of my fucking easiest fights you know what i mean but i won't know until until i get in there you know i could knock her out in the first round hey <laughs> you know or, or i couldn't it could be a grueling 10 rounder like it's i really don't know but looking at looking at her um, and her boxing, I feel like she's probably the most at the at the moment, like the most um, say skilled and hungry to win out of everyone out of four. You know, like I mean, Carol was pretty hungry too, but I mean that real she she has a lot to lose if she loses. You know, where a lot of my other opponents, like you know, they come they fight and and that's it. But you know, as well, Shannon's all of Shannon's opponents besides Rachel Ball have been like one week notice, two week notice. None of them come conditioned. None of them come ready to like really ready to fight. She's knocking out girls that are light, a lot lighter than her, a lot less, not, not strong. And they haven't even had notice for the fight. Like when you're not conditioned, it's so much easier to get hurt. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's that conditioning. It's like when someone is like, you know, you look at the old school fights and it's their conditioning, like the Gaddy Ward, you know, and like the uh, Morales Barrera fights. Like it's those, fighters it's their conditioning that keeps them in there that why they're not getting knocked out you know so we'll see man all i know is that it's going to be a super it's going to be a really good fight it is because we do have like, very we do have similar styles you know what i mean um mental. in our own sense yeah i mean we both like to move the head and we both we both like to come forward and, and aggressive and both got power you know so i mean it's not like that so there's those things that are very similar um you know, they're both the same height, around the same height, kind of, you know, both blonde. <laughs> but, you know, so I think um, it's a good it's a good fight for the fans' style, style-wise. Yeah. Um, and, and I have no idea how she's going to come and fight. I, I don't know if she's going to come forward um, and fight like she does with the others or if she's going to try and box me. Who knows? Um, I, all I know is what I'm going to do. And um, whatever she does, I'll have an answer for it. And to find out, people tune in on April tenth on Sky Sports on the on the Connor Ben and Samuel Vargas on the card. That's it. That's yeah. the only way. Just a quick question: exactly. um, You winning this belt, Ebony Bridges holds the cards of where we fight Australia, America. But do you hold the cards after this fight, or do you hold the cards after the Rachel Ball fight? Does it say that you have to fight in the UK with Rachel Ball? No. Uh, but do you want to uh, fight in the UK against Rachel yeah. Ball? Yeah, okay. I, I I think she definitely want she she should have that fight. Like it's not fair. Like I, I feel you know, as a I mean, look, I could I could easily like dismiss that and go now nah, fuck Rachel. Like, I want to go fight in America. Or I want to go do this and that. But it's not in me. And and I mean, if it wasn't if it was anyone else than Rachel, I probably would. But Rachel's my mate. <laughs> you know what I mean, and 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 I do I, I respect her so much, and um she's she's a she's a top chick and she's a great fighter, and why not go in there and fight? I think that would be a f- fucking great fight too, because I think she'd be a lot more aggressive, to be honest, than than Shannon. 
um, because she's like she's a she got that fire in her. She's tough. She's got really fast hands. She got that reach. I think um, you know, so and she's beat she beat Shannon, you know. So then if I beat Rachel, then you know I'm better than all of them. You, you know what I mean? Like I feel like I can't if I if I don't fight Rachel, then it's me beating Shannon's not that great. <laughs> that makes sense. Does that make sense? Make you said it, not me. I, I yeah. can't say. Bad yeah, I, but, you, does, but yeah, no, I know, but you know what I mean. Like, I mean, because it's not like it's not like Shannon beat Rachel, and now I beat Shannon. It's like, okay, you know, well, you still got beat by Rachel, so now I got to go beat Rachel. Then I feel like I'm, you know. I think regardless, even if you beat Rachel, I think we can see. I think the rematch with Rachel and Shannon will happen regardless. It'll happen, yeah, I think so. Because after I after I beat Shannon, the only fight the the only fight that that people will want to see is that rematch, probably. You know, that's if she yeah. fights again. I might retire her. Who knows? <laughs> There's another fight that people want to see with her. It's uh, Amy, a girl called Amy, Amy Timlin. Oh, Amy both... Timlin. Yeah. She yeah, has a I'd lot like of... to see that fight. Because uh, she, like... she about you and she respect, respects you and looks up to you. Timlin? She said it. Timlin, yeah. Yeah, I, you know, Timlin, a, she's, a, she's a top chick. Too. She's a hard worker as well. She's a really hard worker and I really like her style as well. Um, I was really looking forward to seeing that fight with her and Skelly again because um, I know, do you know what, like, Amy, she went through, fucking hell, she went through, like, five fight camps before she had that fight, like, five camp and then let down, camp and then, like, just that mental drainage of going through that. By the time she got in there, before she even got in there, no doubt, I mean, I would have probably been, so like, fine, let's just get this fucking done. Like, I mean, you, just your headspace would be by that point, I think, you know, so it would be good to see her get in there fresh, you know, um, and it was so unfortunate that she had an injury last time with that hernia. And I, man, I felt that because yeah. I know what it feels like, you know. So I hope that you get that rematch and we get to see um, Timlin and Skelly again and see Timlin take that belt. And um, then, yeah, um, sh you know, Shannon can fight for the Commonwealth title against Timlin. Be good. It'll be still a good fight. Go yeah, ahead, 100%, go ahead, yeah. Going back to you versus uh, Rachel Ball, I'm just putting it out there. Josh Warrington's fighting in Leeds in September. I know you're a Leeds fan. I'm just oh, saying, yeah. and saying right. You, it could it could happen there. I feel like that's too far away. I'd rather do it sooner. Um, to be honest, that's way too far for me. Um, unless I have a fight before her. Um, but yeah, I, I, if I have win, you know, I should say when because I really do think I'm going to win this fight. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd be wanting to get back out in June, July at the most, at the at the latest. Where did the support for Leeds United come from? I know a lot of people want to know that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was kind of like a, a lot of things led to it, but the main um, thing was on, on Twitter, like I had a, I had a bit of a joke, you know, cause I wanted to get into football. Like, I played football when I was younger, um, soccer, like I played representative soccer, I played soccer for like eight years. Um, and back when I was younger, Leeds was like, you know, we're talking like late nineties, early 2000s, like Leeds was, you know, I, I you know, sure. like it, Yes, in Australia, um, Viduka and stuff in Australia, like Leeds was a really popular team. So, um, and my cousin played for the Socceroos and he also, um, yeah, he also um, coached then after playing for Socceroos, coached the Socceroos and um, some other big teams. But anyways, um, so, you know, I always had a, soccer was always, a, or football, I should say, is always a thing for me. Um, but yeah, so, but I thought I never really got into the, like really deep into the Premier League. I thought, man, like, oh, I want to get amongst this, like, you know, amongst the football and, and um, you know, especially because I have a lot of British fans and I want to have, like, a bit more of a connection and, and you know, I just wanted to have something to, to banter and talk more about. Cause, and I love sport, you know. So I put up a joke because, you know, I love to banter. And I was like, oh, okay. So I really want to get into the football. I'm going to go buy four jersey, four football t t tops. Um, I was like, Liverpool, Man United. Everton and Leeds. I go, I can buy four, right? I can support all teams. Like, that's all right. More chance of winning, you know, blah, blah, you know, as a joke. And it blew up. Like, everyone's like, you can't do that. Like, <laughs> you know, and I went crazy. And I'm like, well, I was just having a joke, man. Like, like don't fucking joke about football. <laughs> it's religion. Anyways, so then I was like, you know what? I really, I do really want to um, support a team. And um, there was a lot of Leeds, Leeds fans. And um, so I did put up a poll and I said, all right, you know, who should I support? And the influx of Leeds fans that wanted me so badly to support their team, um, 
I mean, I had like 10,000 votes on this poll or something and 6,000 or something was, was leads. And, and I just thought, wow, like these guys are fucking loyal. They, they fight for their team that, you know, like they're, they they love their team that much that you know they're they're voting they're spreading i thought like these are the guys these are the this is the community i want this is the support that you want and like um and i just i loved everything about it and then i was like you know looking into it a lot more and and um you know just the whole background of these dirty leads and all this kind of stuff and how everyone hates them and you know whatever and i'm like fuck yeah like everyone hates them no one likes them everyone and i thought that they're my kind of people that's what i want i, I don't want to be going for the loved team or like the top team or the best team you know, and that was their first year in the Prem League uh, for like her- forever. And I just thought, you know, um, why not? Like, go with these guys, they're fresh in Prem League. I'm going to go for Leeds. And also, then, you know, um, Hafinha, who's their, you know, the main striker from Brazil. And I have like a lot of connections with Brazil. So I was like, and that was his first season. Everything just like led me to Leeds. I'm like, I can't fight it anymore. You know, like, I can't fight it. And everyone's like, when are you going to um, admit that you're a Leeds follower? Because I, I, was, I was a bit concerned at, f- at first because I thought I would. Um, I'd lose a lot of fans, you know, because I know what the football's over there, but I thought, you know, fuck it. Like, I don't care. Like, I don't want news anyways. If you're going to, like, do- if you're going to ditch me just because I, I go for Leeds, right? And um, so then I came out of the closet, so to speak, as a, as a Leeds fan. Now, you know, I, when I when I do something, um, I don't do nothing half-assed and um, I've gone all in and um, I just, I honestly love everything about Leeds. I, I watch their games. Um, you know, I love, I think they're exciting. Um, I love the, the Leeds community all the fans i love the gear like it's it's honestly it's the best um and i can't wait to get over there and and visit ellen road and you know maybe fight there and definitely fight on an undercard of josh warrington like i think um it'd be unreal um and it's cool because you know like i said i was into soccer or football you know for my whole like life since i was younger it was something i started when i was a kid and i played it all through my teens so to like get that, uh, have this team now gives me a bit more of like a revamp back into you know my, my football days and um, and it's good. I love it and they're exciting to watch and um, yeah, it's good. You should put up a tweet and tag Leeds United and say when I beat Shannon Courtney, can I come at one game half time on the pitch and show off my new belt? You should do that and I guarantee you that will let you. Do- Okay, you know what? Good idea. I will. I will do that. I don't know if you saw, but Hafinha started following me. So, um, um, I've I'm going to try and organise. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna. I've already had a chat, and um, because you know I speak Portuguese, and he doesn't speak English, so I speak to him in Portuguese. And I said to him, um, when I get my belt, we're gonna meet up. We're gonna get a photo, and he's down for it. So, um, it's gonna happen. Amazing. Um, you're on a big undercard, and uh, yes. what a small card as well. Um. Just earlier today, we interviewed Connor Ben, great guy, someone you know very well. Uh, big yeah. interview soon, guys, so look out for that. Um, you're close with um, his sister, India. You live around the, yeah. corner, the corner from his from, dad, right? Yeah, from Nigel, yep, yep. Yep, uh, he had some great words for you. Obviously, he said that you, like, like you said, your style was different. And he always knew you were gonna, you were gonna go for a world title. You were gonna become world champion. He just said, "What a small world that she's on my undercard. She's gonna become world champion on my undercard." And he felt yeah. so honoured with that. Oh yeah, I know. You know, like I said, I've known, I've known Connor from you know when he was like a teen. You know, like from sixteen. Um, I've been to pretty much most of his amateur fights. Um, and he's, I've, I've enjoyed myself watching him um, evolve into the person he is and to the champion he is because he was always special in the gym as well. He, at least 16, 17 years old, like beating up grown men, like, you know what I mean? Like he always had that power and, um, and, you know, he went through, it's no secret, it's no secret that he um, went through some troubles, in, you know, here and that's pretty much why he's gone to the UK. He went to the UK is because he was, he, you know, he got in trouble here and, um, to just see him fight through that trouble and then go to the UK. Like he just pretty much went to the UK. His dad was like, off you go, you know, um, to go over there and change his whole life around and, and become so dedicated and disciplined and take, you know, what he's doing seriously and believe in himself and just his mindset. And, and he's such a humble dude, you know, he's so humble and he's so down to earth and just to see him be so successful. I've loved watching the journey because, um, like I said, I've seen him from his, I'm known from an amateur. The whole family is beautiful, man. His sister, India, I can't even put into words what, like, she is like an angel. 
Like she is honestly, she's probably the most sweetest, genuine human being I have ever met, you know, and obviously Nigel's great. They have a beautiful family. The whole family is beautiful. And um, you can tell by the kids, you can tell how Connor is and how India is and Layla and all the kids, like how, how well they've been brought up and Nigel's done, you know, such a great example. And um, I want nothing but success for, for Connor and, um, and I mean the whole family. So, you know, um, it's pretty exciting, but, I know once we, we get in a bubble, I would say hi because it's been a while, but, you know, we both have very big fights to focus on. So um, it's going to be, I know, all business except for me playing around with fucking Shannon Courtney. But other than that, um, after we win our belts, we can we can celebrate. And, um, yeah, so it'll be good. Have you had any advice from Nigel? Obviously, former two-time multi-world champion. No, nah, not, not, um, not for this fight, no. But, I mean, look, when he held pads for me, I've said this before, he held pads for me the very first time, um, you know, this is like a year and a, two years ago nearly. Um, and he was helping me out, training me. And um, the first time I punched his pads and I did a one-two on his pads, he literally stopped and he was like, he goes, you hit like a man. He's like, wow, like you hit like a man. And he goes, like, no offense, because he's very polite. You know, he's a gentleman. He's like... Don't take offense. I don't like, I mean, that's not too, that, there's no offense to that, but like, that's a compliment because you hit like a man. And, you know, like, he was just so blown away. He couldn't believe how hard I hit, right? And then, um, you know, we're training and stuff. And he's, you know, he's like, you know what? He goes, you can be a world champion. Like, you know, and he believed it. And I, I believe that. And um, he just said to me, this is like two years ago. Obviously, he's like, you just need some more finesse, you know, like Nigel. Like, if you know Nigel, like, you know, he's like, he's like, you know, you got the punch, you got the power, you just need to get that finesse. And he likes that kind of fancy. I mean, I used to see Nigel every day um, at the gym and he, at his age, he used to come into the gym and literally shadow box with no breaks. Like while I'm training, this is when I had a snapped ankle, by the way. So I was doing weights and watching him do his thing. And, and he used to like shadow box for like 45 minutes straight. Like just for, like, you know, none of this round timing and like fucking around, like literally just straight. And then he would do weights for like an hour and a half. Like he's, and he would say to me, like, you know, every, you know, like obviously with the running goes, running's good for you, but you know, you should just get out there and like go for a bike ride for three hours, <laughs> like three hours. I'm like three hours. He's like, yep, just go. You'll get those legs strong. <laughs> I'm like, Jesus, <laughs> man, you're like wow. nuts. But yeah, like he's, um, he's hardcore and, um, you know, he's been in sport for a long time, achieved so many things. Um, I really look up to Nigel. Um, and I look up to Connor as well because just seeing Connor where he came from, you know, and seeing him, to where he is now and taking on his shoulders what he's he's done with that pressure of being Nigel Ben's son and now he's changed around to have his own name. Like it would have been very, very hard for him um, at first, like it's going to be for Campbell Hatton, you know, but he's embraced it and he's doing his own thing. And, um, mate, uh, unbelievable. So, yeah, looking forward to sharing the night. He's an absolute legend, an absolute icon in, in British boxing. And I'm proud yeah. of... I, we, me, me and my colleague Jermaine, we told Connor earlier, earlier that when you first came on the scene, you know, you were known as the le the son of a legend. And now you are Connor Ben. No one... Yeah, it's Connor Ben. Yeah. Look at Nigel Ben's son. You are Connor Ben. You're building your own name. So, you know what? Hats off to, for Connor for even doing that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely. And like I said, you know, like he's a... He's super humble, like, um, and down to earth. And, and he knows... Um, and I'm, I know because he didn't have it easy. Like uh, he didn't have like Nigel, you know, giving him everything that he wanted or anything like that. Like he had a strict upbringing, you know what I mean? So it wasn't like he was spoiled. Um, so, you know, like I said, I think they've done a really good job and, and that's kept him humble and kept him, you know, a hard worker because he's, it's, it's not for him about the money and about the fame. He just wants to work hard and be his best. And he's just, you know, a grafter so 100 percent. me and you um were messing each other messaging each other last week and um i don't know if i hit a nerve but i brought up a name to you which uh you you had a little bit of an opinion against this person because obviously they came out out of the blue and said oh i'll, I'll have a title shot while i mention i'm just going to stir this pot right here it's uh, <laughs> Lisa you had you had the it's a white side right never heard of her <laughs> who is she? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who you're talking about. Someone, someone. No. <laughs> so she came. She, she basically came out, and um, I think it was. 
I think it was just before you were announced as the replacement for Rachel Ball and she just came out of nowhere and just said, oh, I'll have the title shot. Oh, uh, she had yeah, the- yeah. No, she, oh, yeah, this, this, this girl that just, like, been out for, like, a year, had a baby, you know, she was a G- Team GB, so she thought she was fucking entitled to shit and um, calling everyone out. She's literally calling everyone out. She needs to have a day off. She's literally calling everyone out. Um, I don't know. She needs some attention or something because she's been been pregnant and something. She needs attention. I don't know. But she, um, yeah, she was just calling me out and clout chasing, obviously, because um, I was getting the attention and um, and getting the title shots. And she thinks that with three fights, she should have a title shot as well, um, even though she's been out for over a year and she's a flyweight. But um, and just had a baby and her, her you know. Her, her last opponent was like 12 and 70, you know, but apparently uh, she has a better resume than me because she was an amateur boxer. Um, I mean, I was an amateur boxer too. I mean, I didn't fight for Team GB, but there's a very big fucking difference between amateur boxing and pro boxing. And I've seen her fights and, I mean, she needs to learn pro boxing before she starts calling people out. So, I mean, I just feel like it was a bit of an attention-seeking, um, desperate, looking very desperate, very thirsty for clout. Um, it was almost embarrassing. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think she's kind of cooled down until my name came out again for the replacement. And then she's like, Oh, I'm going to get jumped back on that horse again and start calling Ebony's name. But, uh, I don't think it really fucking works cause she's still nobody. Um, but yeah, we'll see. She has sorry, to work I a little bit harder. I just had to bring it up. I'm sorry. You had to do the part. Yeah. Hey, I- you know, I'm, I, the thing is, is that she's behind me. So she's going to be chasing me. I don't chase people. I literally don't chase people so she can continue to chase me. Um, but I don't really look behind. I look forward. So unfortunately, she's she's not going to get on that boat. What's your opinion on uh, Maureen Sheen? Uh, we've been talking about I, – I, look, Maureen Sheen, I think uh, I, I'd like to fight me and my manager. You know, my manager wants to have a fight. Like, I'd like to have that fight. She deserves a shot as well. She's been around for a long time, and I think that would be a great fight. Um, I'd like to fight her. Um, she's, I think she's mentor or she's number one, you know, um, she has been. So, um, I think it would be a great fight. Um, I'd like to, there's so many girls I'd like to fight. I'd love to fight that Roman, uh, Cecilia Roman to unify eventually. I saw that fight with her and, um, Melissa, uh, Parker. And I thought, fuck, like that'd be a mad fight to have. Cause she, she would just sit with me and punch like how, like, you know, I like to have good fights. And I like I enjoy fighting. I'm not just about hitting, not get hit, and, and win titles and whatever. Like I like to actually fight. And for me, I look at those Mexican fights and those fights where they just sit in a pocket, and I think, man, that's my bread and butter. That's what I want to do. Like I will enjoy that fight. Like I want to enjoy it. You know, I'm a little bit, maybe a little bit different because I know maybe, hey, maybe if I'd been boxing for 10, 15, 20 years, um, I'd be like, okay, look, I just want to get in there, get my money, fucking hit, don't get hit, and fuck off. Like, but I'm I'm not really like that. I'll, I still love to fight. Like I like to box and I like to fight. Um, so I'm still really excited about it all and being able to fight like that, um, and have those mad fights, um, you know, could, so that'd be something cool. I think you, Sorry? I, I can see why Nigel Ben liked you, likes you because you, the way you're talking and I've seen your fights before and you remind me a little bit of him. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the middle, yeah. like, just have Yeah, a, definitely. Right. But you know what the funny thing is about Nigel is, um, you know, obviously something that he learned over the years and now is, a, you know, much more mature and what he was trying to teach me and, and obviously like, and why he says that he thinks Connor's going to be a better fighter than him is because he did just want to fight. Like it was just, a, he just wanted to fight and like he probably looking back thinks I probably could have been smarter, probably could have been more defensive or could have been, but we're entertainers, you know, and we, we enjoy the fight. He was a kickboxer before he was a boxer. He showed me some of the kickboxing fights. Like he's always been really like that. So, I mean, yeah, like it's just fun. Like I, I do it because I love it, you know. Um, and I happen to love Mexican boxing. And so that means I kind of like that kind of style of fighting, you know. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like Mayweather and stuff, but it's, it's not really my style. And as much as it would be fun picking someone apart to sit in that pocket and just go fucking like, what do you call it? Um, like animalistic and just fight. Like, I don't know. Like, Everyone, because, like, the rest, um, that yeah, style. like, 
yeah, like, you know, here you know, in America, my trainers here, they call me Tassie Devil, like a Tasmanian Devil because I'm just a fucking firecracker. And, um, and then at home they call me Rhino Mode. You go Rhino Mode, like, because I just, I just go, like, just want to fight and, you know. Um, but, yeah. Obviously, it would be great to see you have these fights. Maureen Sheen, Cecilia Roman, and the Ring Magazine belt is vacant. That's what will make it even mm. more perfect. Even hey, more yeah, perfect. I saw that. Um, yeah, sorry. The Ring belt as well. Mm. Yeah, I mean, look, all of that's definitely something that I can look forward to once I win this fight. But my biggest focus right now is the fight in front of me. Um, and I'm not taking focus off that and thinking about the what ifs after. There's obviously, I am saying like this would all be great but i'm fully focused on shannon um because i need to just like i was i had to be focused on carol Earl. i knew about the shannon fight like a week or so more before the carol Earl fight but you know and i was gonna fight for a world title but i had to stay focused on carol because if i didn't get through carol then the world title doesn't happen you know yeah. just like if i don't get through shannon and all these other fucking dreams and whatever don't happen so i need to make sure that um i'm, I'm just solely focused on destroying her fucking <laughs> they say life but destroying her you know because she's in the way of my dreams and my goals and in the way of my destiny so you know and i'll destroy anything in my fucking path this next question isn't if if or when you beat shannon it could be for the future would you ever consider mm. going to bantam weight going to what you, uh super bantam weight would you ever go super up ben. oh yeah um after yeah definitely i mean um my last fight was at Super Bantam. I, 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 I honestly don't feel that great at Super Bantam. Um, but if it's to get the fights and to get more belts and, and, you know, do what a lot of the other girls are doing, moving up and down weight, then, yeah, I mean, if there's good money and there's a belt and it's a worthwhile fight, then, yeah, of course, you know. But I would like to do my best in Bantam. I mean, I'd rather go down to Superfly. I'm more of a Superfly to Bantam than a Bantam to Super, than a Bantam to super Bantam. I'm more definitely more closer to the Superfly. Then I would be the super band and naturally. Um, I'd be I'd be stronger in super fly than I think. I'm only little man. <laughs> um, just two more questions. I ask all my guests this um, because we're going to do like a highlight reel of hopefully the fight happens, the biggest fight in heavyweight history. Uh, <laughs> Anthony Chandler, Tyson Fury. Who's your money on and why? Oh, fuck. I hate this question. I've stopped even thinking about this fucking fight because every time I think about it or look into it or whatever, I, my mind change. I change my mind, and I'm just such one of those people. And I hate sitting on the fence, um, but I'm just one of those people that is like, well, it just really depends. They can. It's a fifty-fifty fight. They can both beat each other, literally. It just depends who has the right game plan for for the for the other person, and can they neutralize it? You know what I mean? Um, I think if if I feel like if Tyson Fury, uh, I feel like Tyson Fury could outbox Joshua, um, and because he, he's slick and slippery. But then I see him when he fought Wilder, how he was changed and just went on the nuts and on Joshua. And then we saw Joshua fight Ruiz, outbox Ruiz. So then he got that. Now he can box. Like it's like they both have, um, they both have the tools. I feel like Fury's experience might get him through to the win. I feel like it. So I'm leaning more towards Fury than AJ. But ask me tomorrow, I'll probably say fucking AJ. You know. You talk about this fight because the fact that this fight might be June, July, you you beating Shannon Courtney, you could be on that undercard with Rachel Ball. Oh, it could be. Definitely. That would be a great fight. Definitely. Um, that would be unreal. Um, but, yeah, maybe give me a bit more motivation. But um no, I, I I again focus I'm happy just to fight. I just wanna fight and I wanna fight in front of fans and I'd love to fight in front of in front of the British fans. Um, you know, um I know a lot of people wanna fight and then bring their f title back to their country and I do wanna do that eventually. But for me my biggest fan base is in the UK and so that's who I wanna fight in front of. Um so maybe after a few defences I can bring it back to Australia. Amazing. Last question. Do you have a message for Shannon Corney? April 10th <laughs> on the front of uh, Vargas uh, on the cards. And do you have a message for the UK fans? <laughs> My message to Shannon is um, 
bring your bin, bin bag liner because I know you don't think it's a fashion show. Um, so you're happy to weigh in in a bin bag. So if you don't bring one, I'll bring one for you. Um, as for the fight, um, yeah, I hope she has insurance. Um, and as for the fight fans, love you guys. Keep doing what you do. Keep shouting my name. Keep supporting me. I'm looking forward to shocking the world and um, making all my fans proud, you know. Um, and extra special shout out to my Leeds fans because you guys are fucking legends. And um, I'm looking forward to coming to Leeds after this fight with my belts. So we'll figure it out. I'm sure they'll look forward to that. Ebony, um, it was a pleasure speaking to you. It was uh, a <laughs> <worth it. laughs> like You are a great, you know what? I like it. our interviews. Like, I mean, we had a, I mean, this is our first one. You did jump on my live once and I was like, this guy, I've got to give this guy an interview because you're good. I, I really do wish you all the best and I hope people get on your channel and on your page more because, fuck it, man, like you, you really do do great interviews. So um, keep pushing it. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much, especially coming from you. It means a lot. Awesome, dude. And um, yeah, is this going to be saved on your page or? Um, yeah. I'm yeah, going to so post it cool. now. Uh, our YouTube page as well, and it'll go out on Fight Week too. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Might be too late for her to get insurance, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have thanks, Heaves. Uh, have a safe yeah. trip to, uh, to the UK as well, and uh, yeah. luck on April 10th. Awesome. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Appreciate your time. Anytime. Bye. Thank you. Bye.